Hi there and welcome back. So let's continue with the lymphatic and the immune system and we'll start with the lymphatic system. So in the last video we have been talking about the circulatory system, how from a broader connotation standpoint it leads to the cardiovascular system and the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system has broadly speaking three functions and one being the immunity that leads to the immune system. So we we'll first focus for now on the lymphatic system. So this slide shows that we underneath our skin from head to toe everywhere the fluid circulates. That fluid could be plasma, minerals, proteins, blood, red cells, white cells, platelets, you name it. And heart and lungs, they play the role. Heart will send to everywhere the oxygenated blood. It comes back, the deoxygenated blood comes back into the lungs and gets deoxygenated again before it gets into the heart and the cycle goes on. The focus on the blue and the red and what's the difference? The difference is this that the red indicates the oxygenated blood while blue indicates the oxygenated blood. Okay? So we, we have said in the past that the lymphatic system and the immune system, they have their own system. So in this slide, you will see the tonsils, adenoids are not there, but the thoracic duct. There are 600 lymph nodes, not that every single lymph node has been highlighted here, but there are clusters in the neck, armpits, groin areas, even behind the knee. So some major locations are being displayed here. So we have 600 uh, lymph nodes throughout our body and there are organs, the lymphatic organs, so like spleen is out there or uh, you see right at the center there is a thymus gland out there, right? So lymphatic system has its own capillaries, vessels, ducts, the collecting ducts, the lymph nodes and the ultimate fluid or the lymph that circulates throughout. So, this is where I live in Naperville. If I want to reach Chicago or an international airport, I take the small street to big roads to interstate highway tollway that we reviewed last time. What happens? There are many friends of mine, relatives, they all are doing the same thing. There could be a traffic jam, right? So once in a while we see that those who are on the highways and tollways and expressways, they just get out and they take a parallel local small streets, right? So imagine just like that in our body what happens about 20 liters or so, the blood circulates, the plasma circulates using the cardiovascular system, the circulatory system. Out of those 20 liters, say about 2 liters cannot get back in. They are taken over by the lymphatic system. As opposed to the blood capillaries, the lymphatic capillaries will work with them using the lymphatic vessels, lymphatic ducts, and the, collect, um, and the for left and right collecting ducts will put those things back into your original bloodstream where it should go. So that's how the cycle works. So uh, medically speaking, it's a parallel transporting system. Blood is red because of the presence of red blood cells, whereas lymph or the fluid <coughs> is colorless because it does not have red blood cells. Blood plasma contains red blood cells, white blood cells, black legs, whereas the lymph plasma contains white blood cells. In order to understand the lymphatic system, we need to understand what happens 
when it comes to blood circulation at the tissue level. So let's take some look at the micro level. Okay. So blood travels to and from throughout the body, delivering the nutrients and removing the waste. Whole blood never leaves the capillaries. Capillaries are tiny blood vessels. But the leukocytes and the essentials like oxygen, food and water, they can. Once outside the capillaries, they are carried by a derivative of blood plasma called tissue fluid or the interstitial fluid. This fluid circulates throughout the tissues, delivering food, oxygen and water to the cells and collecting carbon monoxide and other waste. However, when it has finished its work and needs to return to the blood capillaries, not all of them can pass back through the capillary walls because the pressure inside the capillaries is too high. So this is a medical language. Uh, consider the, the inner, in a analogy of the traffic system that I gave you and uh, that's how the lymphatic system works and that is, to best, that is the best way to simplify the process. So remember the previous slide about the lymphatic system that I showed you this one, right? So this is all about lymphatic system, all about the lymphatic and immune system. But for now, the focus is on the uh, lymphatic organs, lymphatic uh, vessels, lymph, uh, and the entire circulation. So, here we see that the blood capillaries, there are in the circulation from 20 liters, the 18 liters returns back, the 2 liters that leads to the interstitial fluid that is captured by the lymphatic capillaries or the lymph, right? It doesn't have the red blood cells. So, uh, lymphatic vessels will carry that, it will take you to the lymph nodes, just like you are driving on a long commute, you need to stop by at the rest area, what kidney does. That's what lymph nodes are doing throughout the process. They purify the uh, lymph. Uh, if there are any unwelcome gas, they try to get rid of them. That's what they do. And then they continue through the lymphatic vessels. Ultimately, they reach the right and left lymphatic ducts or the collecting ducts. That ultimately leads to the subclavian veins and back into the main bloodstream. Okay? So basically this covers the same thing, so I am not going to repeat that and um, try to digest the flow of the lymph and then we will get back into the different aspects of lymphatic system. Okay, see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.